Hi, my name is Pam Carriker, and I'd like to share with you a simple technique to use in your art journal. I'm starting out in um, a journal that has mixed media paper in it, so it's a little heavier than like uh, drawing paper would be, a little less heavy than watercolor paper would be. Um, you can use any type of journal that you like. Um, any substrate will work well with this uh, technique. We're going to simply be building up a, a little bit of collage layers and what I'm using for my collage material is deli wrap paper that I've printed on my jelly plate with acrylic paints. Um, you can use any type of scrapbooking paper. The thinner the better, um, in my opinion, uh, works a little easier for laying down. And I like to just rip these up to fit to the page. The deli paper is kind of nice because it's thin and it's um, see-through in parts, so you still get part of the white page showing through, which is nice for later on um, for adding other media on top of it. And I simply glue the back of the paper first, apply the, I'm using my uh, mixed media adhesive, and it works well for this technique because it's extremely matte and it has um, a little bit of tooth to it so you are able to use other media on top of it when you're done, like watercolor type media. I apply, what doesn't matter what adhe uh, collage adhesive that you're using, I always glue the same way. Apply it to the paper first and you can see that it, oh, it soaks into the paper a bit, it makes the paper become kind of limp to accept where it's going to be glued to. And apply your adhesive also to the page that you're going to be gluing to. So you get a good bond and you don't end up with a bunch of wrinkles and a bunch of um, little corners sticking up and whatnot. This um, paper is extremely thin. It's thin like tissue paper, the one that I'm using. Um, so normally with adhesive, this would be very, you know, a little harder to do. It's really easy with the mixed media adhesive because it doesn't uh, change the sizing of the paper. So it doesn't stretch it when it's when it, uh, you get it wet with it, it pretty much retains its shape. Wrinkles occur when, when you wet a piece of paper and there's not much sizing in it and it um, allows the paper to stretch and then you lay it down and it's not completely flat actually. So you're working against, um, against yourself basically because the bubbles and wrinkles and stuff form because the paper is not the same flat shape it was before you added the media. So I have a little bit of um, collage on here, and then I just continue to layer on top of it and build a little base for my journal page. What's cool about doing it with the deli paper like this is it is see-through, and you have it is acrylic paint on there, so you're getting layers of acrylic paint and by using the mixed media adhesive with the layers, you're able to go back with watercolor later, which is not usually something that you can do over the top of acrylic paint very effectively because the acrylic paint is um, it has a plasticky uh, acrylic base to it. So if you put a fine medium like watercolor on top of it, you end up with um, it not being able to soak in it all so it won't stick to it. It'll just bubble up. You'll end up with little bubbles of watercolor paint. Now when I get to places like this where it's hanging over the edge a bit, with this paper it's so thin I like to turn those edges over and just glue them instead of trying to cut it to fit the page. Just turn that over. It just adds another another layer of paper on there. And sometimes I turn them over to the other way too, to the other page to kind of overlap onto the, the back of the page, and that's kind of cool too. And I'm just working around here to get it completely covered. I love the white edges on these papers too, because um, when I use the jelly plate, these are bigger than my jelly plates are, and so um, you end up with these cool white edges that give you a nice little blocked look when you layer them over the top of each other. Kind of gives you a little squared off edges. 
kind of nice. And one more. Let's go this way. So I just continue to layer them until I get a look that I like. Remembering to leave some white on the page because then you can add more things later. More paint and color. It gives you some white to work with, which is always kind of nice. I'm actually going to do another piece down here. You can also flip the papers back and forth. One side's more translucent, uh, more opaque, and then one side is more bold with the colors. So you, by flipping the deli papers back and forth, you can make use of both, both sides of it, which is kind of nice. Okay, so there you can see very, very quick and easy background for your paper. It's all done. You already did the painting, and how many of us have a gazillion, um, you know, pieces of painted jelly, you know, jelly prints that we've already done, but you don't know what really what you're going to do with them. And and yeah, a lot of us use them in collage too. But I mean, this makes a great start to your journal page. It already looks very cool got a lot of stuff you know some stuff going on that you can definitely work with background wise so that we're gonna let that dry up and then we're going to add some more to it okay now that this is just set on there just for a set you know for a minute um, the next thing that I'm gonna add I do a lot of linoleum carvings this is an ear that I just did um, this this I took off of a sketch that I did of an ear and so I, I then I turned it into a, a black and white image and kind of re defined the shaded areas made a linoleum carving out of it and when I do my carvings I end up with all these little test prints um, on newsprint or uh, rice paper just different um, things that I test the print on as I'm as I'm carving it to make sure it's working okay and I always save these to use in my journals because they are great for um, journal page starts so I never throw those little test prints away even if they t uh, print out imperfectly they make great journal pages so I'm just going to cut Cut this one out because I want to use the rice paper on this a little more um, translucent and figure out where I want to put an ear on my page. I really, really like um, like the idea of doing an ear because uh, it just seemed like a great thing. You could, you know, what a good journal prompt. Something, you know, hearing and listening and being listened to, that type of thing. Okay, so... I'm going to place this on here. The nice thing about this, this was tested on rice paper, so it's going to be a little see-through too. And I use um, stays on ink to do my testing or, um, or India ink. Either one works fine because once they're dry, they're permanent, so you can do this. If you were using a dye ink to test your stamp with, then when you got to this point, you would be smearing it all over the place. So I always use the permanent inks to test it. Um, the other reason that I use the permanent ink to test it is when you ink up your stamp, then you can see if the ink is hitting other places, the trails that are left on your stamp, if it's hitting there and you need to knock those down a bit with some more carving, it shows up um, and doesn't rub off or anything if you have to continue carving. So that's another reason to use that. So now we've got all of our collage on here. I'm going to let this dry up and then go on with just a few other techniques and we'll have a journal page in you know 15 minutes awesome awesome to do quick work sometimes now that um, the back is dry and the collage work is all adhered well i'm going to use some crayon on here and this will create a resist so as you go over the top with other media you'll be creating some interesting um, little patterns and things with the resist and these crayons are by Faber Castell and they are um, they are just artist crayons that they screw up like a like a little lipstick or, or a pencil and they have really nice creamy crayon waxy crayon in there which is really cool for journaling so um, so I have my ear going here, and what I wanted to do was have like some maybe sound coming out of my ear. 
So there we go. And add just a little coming out. And then as I go over this, like I said, with the other media, then it's going to create a resist um, with the water soluble media. And for, for my palette, I am actually using um, my blocks, my ink tense blocks. And the way that I use them is I leave them in here and use them like a paint palette. I don't take them out and use them very often. So they just stay right in here. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do real quick before I use those is I'm taking um, a water soluble pencil and this is a Stabilo, <laughs> this is the stump left of my Stabilo pencil. I need to get a new one out, but um, you've got to use it all up, you know. And I'm kind of going around the edge of where I put that collage on and then I'm going to activate that with some water and that just makes kind of a blackish a uh, little shady area around it, which is kind of nice. Just activate that with a little water. It'll help that pop later. And you can do that anywhere on here. Like if I wanted to do that around one of the circles as well to pop that out, just go around one side, little pencil, little water. Amazing what just a little black will do to a page. Don't take a lot of it. You don't want to get overly dark for sure or muddy things up, but just a little black helps things pop out. And you know what? Since we're going to, it's a good idea to always work in threes, kind of do a little tiny bit down here too. So this is called journaling on the go. I don't have a pre preconceived idea of what this page is going to look like. I'm just making it up as I go along, but that's part of the journaling process and part of the fun. So I have the black going on on there. Um, and now I'm going to just add some color with my ink tents blocks. Um, the nice thing about the ink tents blocks is that you, uh, once they're dry, they're they're permanent on your page. So I love using them for journaling because you can get some really vibrant color with um, out adding a lot of heavy media to your page, like acrylic paints building up and being rather heavy. This is not. And you can see they're just nice, vibrant colors. And I go around and just add them watercolor fashion to the page. I let them puddle up. I let them drip down um, and try to get some, you know, bright pops of color around things. And it doesn't take a lot, but it really just adds to your page to do a little bit of color on top. Kind of ties things together as you go over the top. And like I said, I just use a wet brush, pull the color right off the, the palette there and go for it like that because it works really well. It's just like a watercolor palette. But you can also use the, the blocks many different ways. They're good for dry applications. You can actually put them right to the page as like a crayon and color it on and then activate it with water too. All different things. And then right in there, let me go get this a little bit. We're just doing a really fast and easy journal page. So, and remember to work colors around your page too. If you use a little bit of gold somewhere, work it around a few more, few more areas because you want to have your eye follow that color movement around the page. So. As you're working, try to pull the colors around so that you're not just using a color in one spot and then just not using it again anywhere because that doesn't allow for your eye to follow around the page easily. And I'm using it right over the top of the in the stamped image that I collaged. You want to make, you know, make help that white paper blend in as well. So that's why I'm using it right on the top. And I'm using the blue to sh add the shadows in where there's already shadows from the ink. 
use a little blue from the page and paint right on top and add those shadows back in as well. So we've got our color going on. And now I'm going to dry this up again real quick. Now that we've got some more color added to this, so I'll hold it up so you can see. There's a little more color going on. And we're going to dry that up. Now that that layer has, has dried, and I have a little bit of the... Um, the wax resists going on in this area. I wanted to add a little more to that, so I'm taking another color of the crayon and I'm just going to do some lines radiating out from the ear. And this isn't a wax resist, this is just going to be on the page. It's just going to show up a little bit on the page. Um, and it will just stay on there and give us another little element to the page. Okay, so now, now you've got basically your whole page done except for some little details. And things that I like to add to the page at this point, um, a little sequin waste. Uh, I'm going to use a stencil brush. And these are just, um, this is called, it's color box, it's called mixed media chalk ink. Um, but they have, it's, they have different, uh, chalk inks out there available. This is just one that I happen to have handy. I use a lot of different ones. I'm just going to pick up a little of the ink and very lightly add it. And one thing that I like to do is add multiple colors um, in one stencil application so the colors like fade into each other. So you don't end up with dots. Um, I'm, not, I'm just not a big fan of the really noticeable, you know, dot thing going on. I like to blend it out a lot so that it blends out to nothing so it looks faded and looks like it's part of the page instead of sitting on top of the page. So blend that out. Stencil brushes are great for this. And then if you look at it and you think, wow, that just looks... The cap goes up. If you look at it and you think that's that's just a little too harsh on there, the great thing about chalk inks is that you can rub part of it off if it's too, you know, either either sit either take your page and go over it like this and rub it onto the next page and that will remove some of it onto your next page. Just gives you a little something on there. Or take a you know paper towel or baby wipe with a teeny bit of water and just lift some of that off. Because, you do, um, like I said, I, I like it on there, but I like it to be subtle. I don't like it to be really a harsh look. I like it to be barely there. So it looks like it's part of the layers and not just sitting on top of the layers. So you can kind of see, let me see. Here, I'll turn it the right way for you. <laughs> you can kind of see what the page is looking like now. We've got an interesting element. We've got gears coming out of there. It kind of reminds me of, you know, the brain working behind what the ears taking in. And so now it's, now it's really just ready for journaling. And favorite journaling tools, some black uh, Faber-Castell pit artist pens. Those are my favorite because they come in various nib sizes. They last a long time. They're great pens. And then a Uniball Signo white gel pen. And these things are awesome too for adding that little bit of white back into the page. So at this point, I'm ready to do some journaling. And I will finish my journaling and then I will post the picture of the finished page at the end of this little video tutorial. Thanks for joining me. So thanks for joining me and um, I hope to bring you some more short little video tutorials in the near future. Thanks. And here's the finished page with some journaling on it, just a white pen and a black pen, a little bit of journaling adds the, just the right touch to the page.